Okay, everybody, it's another edition of my DIY videos I do, and today it's ADJ at the drive-in. Um, so drive-ins are happening a lot with all that's going on right now, um, and it's kind of neat. It's a neat way to bring families together, bring friends together. I know a lot of times people have things that make them feel good. They see Santa Claus, they get excited. They hear the ice cream truck, they get excited. And there's nothing, almost nothing more exciting than seeing someone like Darren roll up with his ADJ IP video panels and set up a drive-in. So um, right below me on the screen is Garen from Brio Tech. Um, how you doing, Garen? Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Garen Mascarinas. I'm with uh, Brio Technologies. I actually own the company, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, we've been around for about 25 years. So That's actually, it? this is our 25th year. What a bad, you know, what a bad year to lead off to be your 25th year, right? COVID 2020. <laughs> Just stay at 24. <laughs> Just stay at, stay at 24. Don't go past that. Okay. Can we just skip this year and move to <laughs> next year and make that our 25th year? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and what types of shows do you do? I know you do touring. You're doing a lot of drive-ins right now. Yeah, You're doing a lot do, of stuff. We do touring. Uh, we do uh, conventions, production for all type of conventions, camera work, audio, lighting. We have a lot of ADJ lighting and obviously video walls that are ADJ. Love the product. We love, you know, convention convention work is kind of a big deal for us as well. And um, yeah, awesome. it's kind of, kind of everything like that. I'm sorry. Awesome. <laughs> so. scattered. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. And that's because you're so busy right now, which is awesome when you're, you're yeah, running we, around we all day. I'm usually busy with COVID, unfor uh, unrealistically. It's been yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's an it's a interesting time. And we're thankful to have you here. And we're thankful for all you're doing out there. Um, one of the things, too, with the ADJ uh, IP panels, and from time to time, products change. And so in this video, we're using the AB4 IPs. I don't know when people are going to be watching this. So you'll always want to check the site and see what's current and what's going on. Um, but one of the things that's exciting about our video panels, our IP video panels for production companies, is we have a big network of panels. Um, so if you need to double your wall for a weekend, you can reach out to other production companies, hopefully not too far away, and work it out with them to be able to double your inventory without having to buy another wall. Um, and also a lot of the networks work well together. Everybody's in the same business. Everybody's helping each other out. So originally we were going to uh, jump right into the drive-in movies and everything that's about, but you had something after we had planned this pop up, we were going to do, and again, this is DIY. Let me see this right here. That's so, crazy. Yeah. So this is, um, and this is yes. some, and it's kind of pixelized because you sent me some thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's okay, but um, this is a show, and you actually subrented some panels from a company called PSI Production Services International, um, who has an ADJ IP wall as well. But can you tell us a little bit about this show? And I know the picture is not the greatest right now with the thumbnail. Yeah, me. the picture quality is not the greatest. It came off my iPhone, clearly sitting back at front of house, believe it or not. But anyway, um, this was a dance uh, studio uh, here locally in Utah. Uh, Jive Dance Studios, they have four locations, and because of COVID, they weren't able to do their recitals indoors. So the owner of the company came to me and asked if we could build the theater outside. And we indulged and accommodated her the best we could, obviously, with the outdoor elements and uh, being on, on a mobile stage. That is actually the Stage Line 320 that we have there. Awesome. And we actually used 189 panels wow. of the 84 to create that wall. Wow. And it turned out amazing. I mean, the client was happy. It looked it looked great, you know. So that's over uh, that's over two million of, pixels. That's over I'm sorry. I think that's over two million pixels. <laughs> yes. And we had a cascade two two processors together to actually make that happen. And like I said, it worked flawlessly. It, oh, it looked great. amazing. And, you know, that's a big wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. definitely a huge wall. Oh, that's so awesome. Over so, 4,500 pounds of panels on that, on that stage. Wow, that is awesome. Now, 
one of the reasons people use um, video panels, why production companies use video panels, oh, that's a great picture, um, is that even before COVID and before drive-in movies, the return on investment for video panel was generally pretty good. And typically for a production company, your biggest expense is labor. And you might charge so much for a speaker, so much per light and all that. But when it comes to video, for a long time, and, and currently it's okay, but there was a premium so that the labor was low, but you could charge a fair amount to set it up. And then the, the, other, the flip side of that is that what it brings to the table is it totally changes the event. Now you are able to completely change the event that's going on and make it more of an immersive experience and add content, do all that. So is this, is one, is this your favorite movie you're playing right here? Yeah, this is what I cut through the panda three. We actually did that this this last weekend, and um, that it, that event turned out really well. We had uh, fifty five cars the first night, and then the second night we actually played the nineteen eighty four version of Footloose on that same wall, wow. and had seventy seven cars. Wow! So that was not bad for a small community. Yeah, but that looked great. You know, using all global there and uh, built a nice frame to to hang uh, that's 98 panels right there wow that looks uh, great. hanging on that on that structure yeah just to give you an idea of the different size they drive in so there's a company called good guys productions eric wilson in upstate new york and he he recently purchased a wall and he was using an inflatable screen and they were so starved for entertainment in upstate new york uh, i i don't know what weekend it was it was pretty early on he had 600 cars show up they had to set up oh, two. Wow. Yeah, they had to set up two screens, and um, so it, it was crazy. Now, one thing, and I didn't plan to talk about this uh, right off the bat, but one thing that's neat using a video screen versus a projector is it's not really dark out yet. And look at the picture. Whereas yeah. typically, if you're using a projector and inflatable screen or whatever, it has to be dark, dark, dark before you see anything. And here, it's not. It's it's dusk that's or whatever. Correct. That's actually an eight. 8.20 at night here in Utah um, this time of year, and it's bright as day. I mean, you can see it clearly. Wow, that's We're about awesome. about 300 feet back. Not a problem. Yeah, that looks great. So, And I love that movie, too. So now I'm going to bring up, um, we are going to look like, or we're going to see. <laughs> that's what uh that's what things look like from the back. So you can get an idea of the brightness of right. the panels right there. And this is a completely different setup. It looks like a lot more than 50 cars there. It looks like a bigger thing that you, you put on there. Yeah, this one was a bigger car. This actually had uh, 80, 84 uh, cars at this one. They're oh, a little more awesome. wide than uh, deep. Oh, that is awesome. So now... And that's, that's like eight, four, almost 9 o'clock at night. Because it was earlier in the season and earlier in COVID, I think that was uh, that was actually May. So it was still light out when we started the movie at 8 p.m. Wow, that's awesome. So now um, let me bring up another one. Let's put the slide just right over. So uh, this looks like the same one, just a little bit closer, a little different angle. Now, yeah, a little different angle. Yeah, what, what were some of the things, um, how'd you get started doing drive-ins? Did you approach people about it, or did people approach you about it? Uh, actually, we started um, approaching local counties and uh, municipalities to see if we could actually put or do a drive-in in their area. Okay. Because, you know, with COVID hitting, all the events canceled immediately. We were starving for something to do. Instead of sitting on our thumbs, we decided that we were going to create our own work. And awesome. that's what we decided we were going to do. And it's we've been doing it since since uh, May and we're still going. We have stuff scheduled all the way out to October, believe it or not. Oh, that's awesome. For drive -ins. Now, what are some what what surprised you about doing it? Uh, are there any things that, you know, whenever anyone's doing an event or production, Every, you have in your head, okay, it's going to be this, 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 and this, and and you can't control what the crowd's going to, how their reaction's going to be. Um, you can't control performers. There's a lot you can't can't control, right. and so there's always an element, no matter what the production is, of 
surprise, like, oh man, that went better than I thought, or wow, that really didn't go like I thought. What were some things that maybe surprised you during this? The, the thing that really surprised me more uh, was how, you know, people were hungry to get out to do, to come to an event like this. You would think, you know, how drive-in movies have been kind of on, going away over the, over the decades here. And here in Utah, we only have five drive-in movie theaters currently operating, you know, and so they're kind of more scarce. Right. I was more surprised to see people, oh, a drive-in. You know, yeah. we haven't done that since 1964 or whatever else. You know, you get these older, the older generation coming out and enjoying it more than probably the younger generation. But people I like me and you. That, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I haven't been in a drive in since I was like maybe 12, you know, and I'm an old fart. But you know what I mean? It's, it's, it was very surprising how many people actually wanted to come and it was received very well. And, and it's still being received pretty well. That was my, my biggest surprise, That's you know, awesome. in, in doing this. Was there any challenges that uh, with setup or the, any or logistics or anything? Logistic-wise, um, the biggest challenge is FM transmitters. We, you know, we, we have a sound system there for those that, um, like you can see in the, there's a few cars there that had their hatchbacks open or yeah. they're sitting in the back of their, their trucks so they can't really use the stereo in their cars all that well, you know, but the FM transmitters are fickle. And if you don't have one, that's, you know, kind of a high powered one that still can be um, used under, under the guidelines of the FCC, when it's not licensed, you know, distance tra transmitting in a, in a big area is kind of a hard thing to do sometimes. Yeah. So, the sound system is key, <laughs> yeah. key to make that all happen, you did, know. Did you have any issues with the FCC? I, I, that wasn't on my list, no, but that's, I've talked to people we, and they've kind of said, what about the FCC? And I've actually talked to a couple of people that have had the FCC approach them who are doing drive-ins. And, and I don't, I'm not a legal person or whatever, but they said it was all pretty, pretty painless. They did have to pay a little bit, but it certainly wasn't a deal breaker or anything. Right. The nice, the nice, the, what we did actually, and what we still are doing is we partnered up with our local radio station. Oh, awesome! And they gave us their their FCC licensed transmitters, so we were able to to transmit in the area with the local station on site. So we didn't break any FCC rules. You oh, know that's what I mean? Great. Because they're already licensed and they have content that they can they they can transmit all day long. So that actually worked out really well for us nice. because like I said, in our first ones, we, we had problems with the transmitters being too low powered to actually transmit it to the area that we needed. So we, we thought out of the box, Hey, why don't we lo work with local radio stations and see if they'll let us broadcast on their channel and they'd go dark and anybody could hear it. But you know, they didn't know exactly where the, where, where the video content was at to uh, be able to watch the video. Where did you play the content? Because normally video walls, people use a server or they use uh, their laptop. Where was the content coming from? Use, um, with the licensing of the video, we actually had to use DVD players, believe it or nice. not. So we just used uh, Blu-ray machines and plugged it right into the processor and called it good. Did you explain to your kids what a DVD was? Yeah, we had to sometimes, you know, like, what is this thing? <laughs> because normally they stream off, off the website, <laughs> off Netflix or something. Exactly. But, you know, you know that's, that's how it works best, to be honest. Nice. So we are going to, let me go over here. We are going to bring up, uh, here we go. So this is the video panel that you're using. This is the AV4 Correct. IP, and all the photos we show of what you're doing um, are this panel. And this is uh, IP65 on the front, uh, IP54 on the back. Um, I'm going to go over for our audience a couple things about video panels. So uh, four, it's a theme that's a 4.8 pitch. Um, when you're talking about video panels, there's a couple really important numbers. One is pixel pitch, and one is nits, and nits is brightness, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So the smaller the pitch, the uh, more LEDs it'll have, and the closer you can be for viewing. Does that sound right, Karen? Explaining that right? Correct. Yeah, 
That's yeah. correct. So typically for outdoor, you don't need quite as tight a pitch because you're in a larger area. Whereas if you're doing corporate events in a small and ballrooms and stuff, you would probably go with a little bit smaller 3.9 or 2.9 um, pitch on it. And then the other thing is this is, here's the specs on it. It's 104 by 104. So that means 104 pixels by 104 pixels. So that, if I do the math in my head real quick, it's about 10,800 pixels per panel. So there's a lot of LEDs on there. Um, and this is 19.7 by 19.7 or 500 by 500, um, which is pretty cool. And then the other thing is this number here is your nits and that's your brightness. So typically an indoor panel is gonna be about 1200 nits. You don't need the brightness. And an outdoor panel is gonna be anywhere from 3,500 to maybe 5,000 nits, sometimes a little bit higher. To give our audience a little uh, perspective on how bright these are, um, if you had an iPhone X and you turn the screen all the way up as bright as it could go, that's about 634 nits. So this is 4,000 nits. Um, as far as brightness, where do you normally run it, Karen? Do you, you, if, we're, if we're doing an indoor event, believe it or not, on stage, we run it at about 15%. If yeah. we're outdoor, we run it at 100%. Right, because that this wall will this wall will upstage lighting real fast, and the LDs hate us. <laughs> you know, that's an interesting thing. I was talking to someone earlier today, uh, a house of worship, and video walls are really popular in the house of worship right now. You can change your sanctuary in a heartbeat just by changing the content. And one of the things people right. run into is um, they get a video wall, and then they're moving heads, and the rest of their lights they can't see anymore. The video wall is just overpowering it. So that I was actually talking to a house of worship uh, integrator earlier about upgrading some lights because they just put in a video wall and now they're, they can't see any of their moving heads or anything else. It's kind of lost uh, in the video. So um, cool. So yeah, and this is an aluminum frame. Uh, very easy to set up, install. Here's a picture of the back. Um, it's rear serviceable. You can see the tiles just pop out. Everything's sealed. Um, it has the handles on it. It is IP65 uh, on the front. IP54 on the back. And then as far as processors, um, you were using the Nova. Um, we're using the Nova Star HD Pro. Yeah, we're gonna look that up right now. Nova. Here we go. And so does that look familiar? Yeah, it sure does. Okay, so that's for, the unit right there. So for people who haven't ever connected a video wall, what you typically have is your content. Um, you might, and a lot of times people use laptops, and then you would go out of that. Um, you might go into a video switcher. If you're on a laptop, you're typically going to control it through the media software you're using. You're going to mix video and all that on the computer, and then you're going to plug into something like this or a VX4S or a VX6S, um, and then from here you are going to go out to your video wall, and these are your outputs right here. And this is, uh, if I remember right, um, each output is about 630,000 pixels, um, and the total is uh, about 2.4 or 2.6 million pixels uh, for this unit. So it's gonna control a lot, a, a nice size wall. Um, and why, you own different processors in the past, I believe, and you actually owned a different wall before ADJ. What made you choose this processor? I like I like the versatility of that processor. Um, it it scales the in, the the content that we need very easily. And with the with the uh, Nova Star software, we can manipulate each one of those ports to do basically what we want it to do. Um, so they don't have to, you don't have to run redundant. Uh, uh, ports you can actually have you can separate walls with that do four different walls with that um, with that processor that's a good point um, yeah it's and plus it you can you can control it through DMX so the actual light board can actually control that processor and pixel map uh, video content as well so which is really awesome we've done it my LD's done it a couple of times with a, a couple other events we've done in the past, and it really works out well. Yeah, so I, it's kind of really universal. I know a mutual friend of ours, Kenneth, I believe he has a Grand MA lighting board, 
and he got the uh, Media Master Pro, and that was a big part, is so that he could set his cues in his video on his Grand MA. So when he's bringing up a fader, he's bringing up different video clips and controlling the intensity and all that, so he's not having to go between multiple pieces of gear. And nowadays, more and more, it's all working together. You know, your video, your lighting, everything has to be on point. So that's a great, great reason. You also brought up another interesting point, um, is that with the, and it also works, the VX4S and VX6X do the same thing if you're using smart LCT software to configure it. But you can actually run multiple walls off this and multiple pixel pitch and multiple configurations. So you can have a couple of ports doing a 2.9 mil, mil wall and then another port doing a six and have it all go through one processor. And on the software, you can configure the walls and, and do everything on that. One thing that's neat about this um, processor is the other ones, like a VX6S and VS4S, you need the smart LCT software is typically what people would use and they can figure it on their laptop, which is really easy to do. And then they would download that into the processor. On this one, you can actually do just about everything without having to use a computer where you can go to the front of the processor. Um, and you can do that on some of the other ones as well, but you're gonna be limited as far as your what you can control and your configurations are gonna be pretty basic. Whereas in here, you can just walk over to your rack and go through and set everything up without having to plug in a laptop and download your configuration file. Correct. Yeah, this this processor is very it's very user friendly and very easy to use, um, and that's that's the other reason why it brought you know that it drove our, us to to buy this one in particular. Cool, um, cool. Well, I think we've covered a lot of stuff. I'm going to bring up another picture here, and what is this? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> oh, that's bad. So is. Here's an idea. That background is just beautiful. Is this your backyard? Yeah, I wish. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the, living in Utah, we do have that quite, quite the unique uh, scenery, and that's in southern Utah. That's actually in a little city or town called uh, Kanab, Utah, right by um, the Grand Canyon. Nice. Just outside of the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Is this and that was just a music festival we did uh, about three weeks ago. So honest. this is a COVID, this is during COVID times and everyone's kind of spaced out this and everything? during COVID times. Yes, wow. they've actually, they laid out, um, they've painted the ground so it's in pods of, you know, six feet. And most of these people, right, you see in there are, are families that are sitting together. But it's all within the COVID guidelines. But you're so lucky that Utah's letting you do that. I know people in other states that have tried to do that and they've gone to their cities and counties and all that and said, look, I'll do sound lighting video for free um, if you'll let me do this just because they want to show it's safe and they want to be the company going forward to do those. And every time just about there, and I, this was just a month or so ago, but they were still getting shut down that people didn't want to, you know, do that. And I, and we all kind of say the same thing that once one person does it and it's safe and they show it can be done safely, then hopefully the floodgates will open and, cities and counties and states will be more open to doing outside uh, entertainment right. like this. Right. We're, Utah is a little unique. Um, we like to be the first and show that we can actually do things. Our state didn't completely shut down, but now as things have, have gone along, we are opening up more and more and we're able to do more and more because of, you know, the, it, within the COVID guidelines. And we've not only done events like this, but we have done house to worship where they they want to get their congregations back. So we've done um, outdoor worship uh, on Sunday, and they've had 1,200 people there, nice. COVID comp compliant, and all boxed off into six foot sections where everybody's social distanced and whatnot. It can happen if, as long as the government will let you do it. Well, I'm going to, I, we just had a thing that said we're going to be out of time pretty quick. So I'm going to have you, how would people reach you if they wanted to do something like this or had questions? They can uh, reach us by 801-572-3002 uh, is our office number. You can look us up on Facebook at Brio Technologies or um, we, you can look up our website at www.brioav.com. Cool. And I'm Tom Ferret, Regional Sales Manager for ADJ. If you want to email me, it's tom.ferret 
F-R-E-R-E-T at ADJ. And with that, we are going to sign off. Thank you so much, Karen. This is awesome. Hopefully we've given some people some ideas to, you know, and at the end of the day, we're just bringing families out to have fun and, and try to get back yes. to normal. And, and you've been really instrumental in your community doing that. So thank you for that. And uh, I guess with that, we will sign off. Thank you.